On June 7, 1981, Israel launched a completely unexpected surprise attack on a nuclear reactor in Iraq, which was claimed to be part of Saddam's nuclear weapons program. On September 6, 2007, Israel again launched another surprise attack, this time in Syria, targeting a nuclear site again believed to be part of a nuclear weapon program. Now, for the past decade, all focus has been on Iran and their nuclear program. Israel has repeatedly stated that they will not allow Iran to have a nuclear weapon, and knowing that Israel has attacked before, will they again, this time striking Iranian nuclear sites? First, the sponsor, Cove. I'm happy to have them back. I love this product, the Cove Commuter 2. After seeing it, my buddy Eric went out and got one, I got another one for a friend, and I just ordered another for my brother for Christmas. So hopefully he doesn't see this before. But the speaker is awesome. It can get real loud, is water resistant, has a built-in microphone, 30 foot range, can run for up to seven hours on a single charge, and it's actually two speakers in one. It comes apart for true stereo audio. It's a real cool speaker that you really have to try for yourself. And with my link in the description, you'll get 67% off. 67% off the price, and right now they have free shipping in the US through the end of December. Use code COVERT67 at checkout to make sure you get that though. Go over right now and check them out at coveaudio.com slash covert67. The Cove Commuter 2. Get it and you'll want to throw out your old cheap Bluetooth speaker once you hear the difference. Iran has had a nuclear program for decades, since even before the revolution in the late 70s. The plan was to build up nuclear power plants for electricity and for research. It was in 1984 when an intelligence report leaked to the press when accusations began that Iran's nuclear program was really being used to develop nuclear weapons. And since, their program has grown significantly, and with it, the fears they could build nuclear weapons have grown as well. Any strike by Israel would be much more difficult than that of Iraq or Syria. There are many sites which would have to be targeted, and they are spread out across the country. And Iran has built some of these sites deep underground. Natanz is probably the most famous one, where parks are believed to be built under 10 meters of earth, with 2 or 3 meters of reinforced concrete in addition. On top of that, Iran is much further away from Israel than Syria or Iraq. To make matters even worse, Iran has a pretty capable air defense network. The strike on Iraq's reactor in 1981 was during the Iran-Iraq war, where Iraq was distracted and not expecting an attack to come from the west. The 2007 attack was in Syria, a country right next to Israel. An attack on Iran wouldn't have any of these advantages. But still, it's something Israel has thought a lot about. As for any plan, first you'd have to figure out how to get there. There are three likely courses Israel could take. They could go north, fly across northern Syria along the Turkish border, and then across northern Iraq into Iran. Or a more central route, flying along the Syrian-Jordanian border, then across Iraq and into Iran. Or a southern path, south of Jordan, possibly through Saudi Arabian airspace, then through southern Iraq, or possibly even out into the Persian Gulf, then into Iran. Each one has their pros and cons. A northern route would make you visible to Syrian and especially Russian radars. They will almost certainly notice a large number of Israeli aircraft and possibly notify Iran well before they arrived, giving them time to prepare to defend themselves. But a lot of northern Syria and northern Iraq are less controlled and defended by each's government, plus more hills and mountains to avoid detection by radar entering into Iran. The central route would be the shortest, but you'd have to fly past a lot of air defenses in southern Syria and northern Jordan. There's also some pretty populated areas, including both countries' capitals not far away. Then across Iraq, likely having to have to go around Baghdad to avoid detection. And finally, the southern route. This is actually the route that Israel flew when it struck the Iraqi nuclear reactor in 1981. Israel and Saudi Arabia do have a mutual enemy in Iran, so it's possible that Saudi Arabia would look the other way to Israel flying across the northern border of the country. Then either through southern Iraq, or maybe over the Persian Gulf. Whichever route they choose, it would be an extremely long flight. At least 3,000 kilometers round trip, and likely longer. The strike on the Iraqi reactor really pushed the limit of how far they could fly before running out of fuel, and this would be an even further trip. Making it more difficult would be the need to fly low through at least part of the flight to avoid radar detection, especially entering Iran. Flying low uses up more fuel as the thicker atmosphere creates more drag, so the engines have to run harder to make up for it. You'd likely need to refuel at some point, not just to make sure you have enough to make the flight, but also extra in case they encounter defenses. They could possibly travel with tankers, having them fly with them halfway, refuel from them, and then have them return back to Israel. Or they could have tankers over the Mediterranean, or possibly over the Persian Gulf. However, this would greatly increase the odds of being detected, and adds to the complexity of the operation. That long range they have to transverse just makes it so much more difficult. 
Once they settle on a course, they'll have to deal with Iranian defenses. The element of surprise would be the utmost importance here in limiting Iranian defenses. The hope would be to catch the air defense operators and intercept aircraft off guard, fly in quickly, hit their targets, and get out of there. If they were able to refuel and had extra to spare, they could fly in low through western Iran, which is mountainous, giving them many options for avoiding radar, and also longer range air defenses. These longer range systems need a direct line of sight to guide a missile in, so even if it does detect and launch on an aircraft, if that aircraft can dip below a mountain out of sight, the missile will lose track and fail. Another very real threat would come from the short range air defenses. Iran has hundreds and hundreds of AAA systems, many deployed around nuclear facilities for just this reason. Israeli planes would face a major storm of fire as they flew over to drop their bombs, making it extremely difficult to complete their task. So maybe they can just use cruise missiles, right? Launch them from a distance, which avoids the aircraft having to fly into harm's way themselves, and would also save fuel, making the flight easier. And they could do that with some targets. Weapons like the small diameter bomb, Delilah, and the new Rampage, for example. But again, some of these sites are buried deep underground. For these, you would need what is often referred to as bunker busting bombs. The most likely of these to be used will be the GBU-28. This bomb is made to deeply penetrate the most hardened and underground bunkers designed to punch a hole through 6 meters of reinforced concrete or 30 meters of earth, then detonate inside. Israel purchased 100 of them from the US back in 2005, which would give them the ability to hit these underground sites. But again, to use them, they would have to fly directly over them, opening themselves up to AAA fire. So, no matter how you cut it, it would be an extremely, extremely difficult task to be able to hit all these nuclear facilities. The long distance, flying over several countries without being seen, Iran's capable air defense network, dropping their bombs, and then getting home. But even if they were able to do it somehow, it wouldn't simply be over. Iran couldn't sit back and just allow it. Israel, and any other country that assisted, would certainly be targeted. Iran is a pretty large and capable military, especially their ballistic missile arsenal. Now maybe Israel could then threaten Iran with their own nuclear weapons so they don't retaliate, at least openly. But Iran has other ways, through Syria and non-state actors, which could make Israel pay a heavy toll. Another problem is the politics. The blowback on Israel would be extreme as well as any other country that knew about it. Nowadays, with so much technology, satellites, more capable radars, especially more of them with the war going on in Iraq and Syria, it would be hard for any neighboring country to claim ignorance. The US would almost certainly detect any attack while en route, Saudi Arabia as well if they flew south, even Jordan. And these countries could pay a serious price for allowing it. There would also likely be vast public condemnation against Israel, similar to the 1981 strike on Iraq's nuclear reactor. That strike brought about UN Security Council Resolution 487, condemning them for the attack and ordering them to compensate Iraq. And every country voted in favor of the resolution, including the US. And today, it would likely be even worse. So a direct airstrike like we've seen in the past is unlikely. Even if they somehow succeeded, the public outcry and the political cost would make it not worth it. So instead, Israel has taken to other measures, such as eliminating scientists and computer viruses. The most famous, Stuxnet, was likely built and deployed by Israel and the US. It's reported that the US agreed to help Israel to stop them from bombing the sites. It attacked Iranian nuclear facilities, causing damage to centrifuges and possibly other equipment. But that was over a decade ago now, and it never stopped Iran's nuclear program. So a physical strike from the air on these sites is likely still being considered. So we still haven't seen the end of it. With Israel continuing to say that they will not allow Iran to build nuclear weapons, and Iran knowing perfectly well that having nuclear weapons is the ultimate deterrent and protection from attack. We'll have to wait and see what's next.